Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play some SCAC basketball as the Trinity University Tigers take on the Centenary College Gents in another SCAC clash that is oh so important for the Tigers, especially after dropping last night's game to St. Thomas. Everyone counts in the SCAC and no game can be taken for granted. I am Reed Rosales, joined with me is Caleb Breed and Caleb, these two teams looking to bounce back from some tough losses last night. The tough loss for Centenary especially was kind of a surprise. We were talking about it earlier on throughout the broadcast. We weren't able to give a lot of updates due to some uh, live scoring issues with, uh, 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 with Shriner, but Centenary found themselves in a pretty comfortable lead, ended up kind of blowing it there at the end. But of course for Trinity last night, the big story of the game Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. It absolutely killed him. 22 turnovers during that game. And whenever there is a one point loss, any single turnover can be devastating. 19 points off of turnovers for the St. Thomas Celts last night. And a massive reason, whenever we were talking with Coach Jimmy Smith, why they ended up losing that game. So definitely something that the, or, or that this Trinity Tigers team is going to be working on limiting whenever they play the Centenary Gents here in Calgard. Jacoby Greenleaf won the tip against Christian Green and immediately we're seeing the new starter in effect as Zach Fenn forces a bit of a turnover and Jacob Milhouse puts in the first bucket for the Tigers. Much quicker scoring are the Tigers as Last night's game was one of the lowest scoring games of the season for them. And now the Gents on the attack. Corner three, doesn't go, hits off the side of the backboard. That was Seth Thomas, the most dangerous offensive weapon that the Gents have to offer. Jacob Harvey driving in, that one won't go. Greenleaf with the rebound, and he's quickly going back down the court as the Tigers are pressing aggressively with Fenn on the court. It's what they usually do when the Chaos Creator enters the floor. And now Craig Collier, Going up to Quentin Beverly. Beverly going to bear. Now in the arc, Thomas trying to find anything. Gets it to Greenleaf. Greenleaf fumbles it, and the Tigers will get that turnover. Harvey and the Trinity Tigers going in. Zach Fenn having the ball punched out by Thomas, so it'll be a throw in for Trinity. Saying Fenn's name this early on in the game is definitely a, a rarity for sure. This is actually Fenn's first start, not only the season, but for his career. 43 games played up to this point, as looks like Fenn is going to draw the foul here, but 43 games played up to this point, zero starts, getting his first start uh, for the uh, unwell Tanner Brown, who's uh, had a little bit of knee issues, came down with an illness earlier on this week, and so he missed both last night uh, and also tonight, hoping to get him back uh, before the games next weekend. But whenever you lose a big member of the starting rotation, it does kind of open up a couple more opportunities to see these new players in. Is that Christian Green who loses the ball there, driving down and backing out. And now ball goes out of bounds. Zach Fenn yet again getting to call his name out a lot for, uh, as you mentioned, causing all that chaos in the defense. Now. Gents back on the attack, trying to get their first points of the game. 18.30 on the clock. Collier going up, trying to find a teammate. After being a little bit of a takeaway by Green, but Gents able to get it back. That three won't go for Quentin Beverly, and ultimately it will be a Tiger ball. Some turnovers from both sides, but the Gents had the opportunity to get a good look with the three, but now Harvey and the Tigers will hopefully be the benefactors to extend their lead, really wanting to put points on the board after last night's subpar offensive performance. Christian Green looking for someone inside, gets it to Harvey, Harvey with a quick three. That one won't go. And that was one of the struggles for the Tigers last night, just couldn't get it going from the perimeter. Now, Jens trying to get it to the corner, a bit of a fumble, it makes them reset the play. Beverly gets it into the paint, Greenleaf, We'll see if he works against Braxton. Gets the pass over, back to Greenleaf. And Jacoby Greenleaf draws the foul. He'll head to the line, getting that pass over to Jalen Bear, who gave it back to Greenleaf. This is a very aged and experienced team. 
Greg Collier is a junior, Seth Thomas a senior, Quentin Beverly is the young sophomore, Jalen Bear a senior, and Jacoby Greenleaf a junior. So very upperclassman-led team are the Gents. It is a very, very experienced team here for Centenary, and they've kind of had a little bit of struggle so far this year, of course. I mean, nine wins, you know, it isn't, you know, dire straits for this team. Seven losses, so it isn't uh, exactly how they would be wanting, but this is still a very good team. Whenever we were talking with Coach Smith, he said that you can't really afford to take any games off, especially in this conference, and Trinity is still going to be coming into this game playing 100%. Uh, trying to attack the basket, trying to do their best because they know that if they do not give 100% of their effort, if bad things are going to happen. Fenn working his way into the arc, kicks it back out for Barry. Braxton Barry gets it over to Christian Green. Green at the top of the key, working against Greenleaf. And uh, Greenleaf wins the battle of the players with the names that have Green in their last name, but whistle blown. Stoppage of play, 17-12 on the clock. That's gonna be the second foul there on Braxton Berry so far. And we already have movement here on the bench as Berry is gonna come off. One of the big strengths of Braxton Berry is of course his size. You can see it whenever he's on the court. 6'9 as a junior, just absolutely fantastic height, fantastic range, but all of that size does kind of get him into foul trouble. Uh, ending up reaching, ending up drawing those whistles. And so it is kind of common to see him go into the bench a little bit early, but this is a very, very early exit for Braxton Berry. And it'll be very interesting to see how that affects the game plan for Coach Smith moving forward in this one. It'll be Tiger Ball. Jacob Harvey will be the ones to inbound it. He finds Zach Fenn. Fenn gets it over to Ty Williams, the new face on the court for Trinity. Now kick back out, Ty Williams will take the three, and he sinks it. Tigers up five to two. And the three coming way earlier than it did in last night's affair. Kobe Greenleaf trying to find one of his teammates, gets it to Beverly, back into Greenleaf. And now Thomas gets it back to Quentin Beverly. Beverly over to Thomas, now Greenleaf. Some good passing from the Gents leads to a bucket. Tigers were getting led around on a rope with their passing, and now Christian Green, we get over to Jacob Milhouse. Milhouse, great defense by Greenleaf, forces the pass over to Harvey. Jacob Harvey back to Milhouse. Milhouse to Harvey, up to Christian Green. Green thought about passing it over, does pass it over to Zach Fenn. Fenn running it inside, now to Ty Williams, back out for Jacob Harvey. And another three for Jacob Harvey, one of many this season. and. Uh, they respond to Centenary in kind with some fancy passes of their own. Jacob Harvey has been fantastic so far this season. Uh, D3 Hoops player or, or player of the week earlier on this year. That is a deep three by the Centenary Jets. That looks like it's gonna be Craig Collier, the one who hit that one as we have our first media timeout, I believe, of the game. But just a fantastic response there by Centenary. As we're gonna get the replay here, that was a deep three and it didn't even touch the rim. But Jacob Harvey has been fantastic this season. One of the team leaders, of course, as a junior. He's really stepped up in this role. As we take a look at the SCAC conference standings, you can see it is an absolute dogfight up at the top. Of course, Trinity and St. Thomas both tied at one loss apiece in conference, with Trinity taking that loss last night. But overall, this is a very, very competitive men's side of the conference, and it is a fantastic season that we are getting to cover here on, or, or on the Tiger Network. Trinity's 15 and one start, the best in program history. St. Thomas 14 and two, and this is a SCAC that is potentially a multi-bit conference, and that is very gonna be very tough to do. Region 10 has been very good this year for the SCAC and the Skyac. Redlands, Pomona Pitzer, Cal Lutheran, they've all been in the conversation for Pool C bids. 
it'll be a fight till the end because Division Three hoops this year have been just having a lot of parity. And Trinity finding that out for themselves during that St. Thomas game. Christian Green getting it into Dean Balo, who's a new face on the court. Balo over to Harvey, and Harvey working against this Gents defense, trying to limit the Tigers as best they can. Ty Williams in the paint at the top of the key. Christian Green takes the fundamental shot and sinks it. Christian Green has been so good at scoring so far this season. He had a couple of highlight uh, real plays last night, of course, with that block, huge dunk as well. A couple of times uh, he dunked the ball, actually, but Christian Green, as a freshman, he has been basically the Swiss Army knife for this team on offense. He does everything, as that's a good little shot, does not fall, a little bit short off the front of the rim, but Green with the ball at the moment, driving through, puts it up and lays it up and in through the contact. And now it looks like he's down after that play, goes up with the ball, does not fall, and we do have a stoppage here. Christian Green is looking to be in some pretty serious pain here after that shot by Seth Thomas coming off the court, favoring that right leg very much. He, he also had an injury earlier on during the game against St. Thomas as looking at that replay there, he definitely did have some contact, but he did have an injury earlier on during last night's game, but that was an arm injury, so Green getting a little bit of wear and tear here over the last couple of days. And it looks like it was a right leg cramp injury for Christian Green, so hopefully he won't keep him on the bench for too long. Maybe having to just rest or get it massaged out. Trinity up 12 to nine. Some free throws on the way for Craig Collier. Junior out of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Sinks that one to start things off. And this is a scenario from Shreveport, Louisiana, Arkansas. Certainly a good ground to scout for players. As both of them are sunk, 12 to 11. Ty Williams running it down the court. Looking, getting up to Dean Balo. Balo is one of the best three-point shooters in the SCAC, leading the SCAC in three-point shooting percentage. Kicks it out for Ty Williams, thought about the three, instead drives it in the paint. He loses the ball, and now Centenary having an opportunity to take the lead here. They get the ball over to Takeem Singleton. Singleton goes back down to Collier. Collier, we'll see if he gets it to Greenleaf. He does, Jacoby Greenleaf takes it in himself. Gets stripped of the ball, it will be Jen's ball. Correct call as Ty Williams punched that one out. So gents get another chance. 13 seconds left on the shot clock. It's going to be a fight for points to be sure. They launch it back out, trying to get it to Singleton, but too contested. And now Dean Balo puts it up and puts it in. So the freshman extends the lead for the Tigers. That scoring play right there got started off of that steal by Harvey. Harvey has been very mobile so far, not just this game, but this season. Very active in all fronts as that is a huge three. Quentin Beverly, sophomore out of Katy, Texas, nailing the three to tie this game up. 14 all here in Calgar Gymnasium as Williams is gonna take that shot from outside and he nails it as well. Raining threes down here at Trinity right now as both of these teams are getting this game started off with some very high powered offenses. Trinity is still leading by three, deep three. It doesn't fall off the back iron, but foul drawn. I believe Ty Williams is going to be marked with that one. Ty Williams not particularly agreeing with the call, but whistle was blown. And Jalen Bayer back on the court for the Gents. Senior out of Athens, Georgia. And we'll see Seth Thomas inbound it here. We'll see who he goes to. Gets it to Singleton, but a collision. Foul will be drawn. And they're going to give it to Jacob Harvey. So trying to really contest those inbound throw-ins, but maybe a bit too much as interesting substitution here. Carter Rook coming in. Freshman out of South Lake, Texas. Usually don't see him this early on, but 
We'll see what Coach Smith has in store as Jacob Harpy heads back to the bench a bit early. Now under the hoop, puts it up, can't get it in. Good defense from the Tigers. Jalen Bear unable to connect. Dean Balo going in with the spin move and that one blocked by Thomas. Rejection of uh, the freshman and now driving it in. Quick shot put up and it goes in for Craig Collier. 17-16, Tigers keep moving. Rook will see if the pace keeps up. Rook gets out to Balo. Balo with the three and he sinks it. So Tigers up 20 to 16, long pass intercepted by Dean Balo. Balo's everywhere on the court right now. Grant Jacobs, another new face on the court for the Tigers, along with Grayson Herr, who has the ball in his hands right now. Herr slows down the play a little bit, gets it to Balo. Now in to Ty Williams. Williams back out to Herr. Herr thought about a three. It said defers to Balo. Williams, 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Grant Jacobs. Loses the ball, and now the Gents get the takeaway. 2-1-2, two two. we'll see who wins this battle. That one is won by the Tigers, but whistle blown. So, some action-packed basketball happening on in San Antonio. It was Singleton, I believe, who got that steal for Centenary, but just going back to that fantastic play there by Dean Balo. Balo has been really kind of undershadowed, or or sorry, overshadowed by, by the success of Christian Green, by the success, uh, of course, Jacob Harvey, Tanner Brown. This is an offense where everybody can contribute, as Coach Smith told us, and it kind of allows uh, for Baylor to sort of fly under the radar a little bit. Um, one, one of two of the pair of uh, fantastic freshmen that we have on this team, and Baylor has been just incredibly great, incredibly consistent coming off the bench, has gotten a couple of starts here, uh, of course, with Brown being out, but it is just great to see how how well Balo, um, as well as Green, of course, are adapting to not only their first year uh, of playing basketball at the college level, but also adapting to this Trinity Tigers team and making an impact so early. This is a Tiger team that is currently blistering the Nets from the perimeter. Four for five from downtown. And they are certainly going to look to keep that up. Grace and her will be the one to inbound it to Rook. Another freshman on the squad is Garter Rook from South Lake, Texas. And he has the ball in his hands, gets it back to her, and the Gents pressing in the opposite court. Playing a bit more aggressive defense is Quentin Beverly against Grace and her. Her tries to drive it in, gets it to Milhouse. Milhouse trying to find Jackson Capellish, another new face on the court for the Tigers, but just wasn't there. It's going to be Tiger ball as we had multiple different signals to multiple sides, but ultimately it will be Tiger ball. So Rook will be the one looking to inbound it. We'll see who he goes to. Rook taking some time. His pass gets intercepted by Singleton. And now Gents with some positive momentum going in to the Tiger side of the court. Craig Collier back up to Singleton. Now back down to Collier. They're playing catch with each other. Singleton thinks about going in. Probes a little bit, but kicks it back out to Beverly, who defers it back to Singleton. And now Singleton and the Gents can't really get anything in. Seth Thomas goes back up to Singleton. Now they drive in, forcing the issue, and it's going to be a travel call. So great defense by the Tigers. Shot clock was down to three there. Centenary really had to get that one off, put it up, but maybe in, in rushing, trying to get that ball up and towards the basket, ended up committing that travel violation there. Was Singleton, the one who turned it over, or, or Singleton, the one who's gonna get credited for that turnover, as that is going to be Rook who goes down. See who they call for it. It is going to be Craig Collier. That is going to be Collier's second, or, or no, sorry, first of the day. And already both of these teams with five fouls and with still over a half of, of this first half to go, both teams kind of starting to get into a little bit of trouble with, with the officials, really need to start limiting the aggressiveness as this is gonna be a deep three, cannot get it to go. Rebound there by Takeem Singleton. 
Singleton and the Gents looking to cut the deficit a little bit. Singleton fumbles the ball for just a little bit, but it gets into Beverly's hands and some nice passing. And the Gents flash that again. Takeem Singleton finishes it, but it was thanks to a great pass from Greenleaf. And now Balo kicks it out to Capellish. Capellish over to Rook. Rook with the three, and that one won't fall. It's off the rim. Gents working fast as the pace picks up yet again. 20 to 18 the score. Gents could tie it or take the lead. Greenleaf gets it over to Thomas. Thomas takes the three, and he sinks it. Seth Thomas, second highest scoring player in the SCAC, and he proves it wide there. Jason Her charging in, but it's going to be a foul to the benefit of the Tigers. The Gents bench did not like that call. We're gonna get the replay here, and a lot of contact there. You can see immediately Takeem Singleton basically pleading with the official to give a charge. Instead, it will be a foul against Centenary. And now that they have the lead, Trinity finds themselves in, in a situation where we kind of saw this a little bit last night. St. Thomas got the lead and just held on to it. It felt like Trinity was playing from behind basically the entire game. Even though they did have leads at certain points, it never really felt like they were separating away from the Celts. And they're definitely going to be trying to avoid that here today, kind of using the high-powered offense that we have seen during this first half to hopefully break away from the Gents. And now Herr puts it up, and he gets the short shot there. So Tigers take the lead back as Christian Green, Zach Fenn, Jacob Harvey, Jacob Milhouse, all back on the court for Trinity. And meanwhile for the Gents, A.J. Hall, another senior out of Thibodeau, Louisiana, coming back in for the Gent making his first appearance of the day. And it's going to be Gent ball. We're gonna say a Tiger touched that one last. So Gents get another opportunity. 16 seconds left on the shot clock. Seth Thomas looking for a teammate, trying to find a friend. He does in AJ Hall. Hall in the paint, puts it up. And that one doesn't go. Green with the board. Now Christian Green, he has the opportunity to extend the Tiger lead. He goes in and another foul drawn. So Tigers, once again, showing that they are certainly adept at forcing some issues. That's already going to be the seventh foul of the game for Centenary. So Trinity will be in the bonus for the next nine minutes and nine seconds. As some communication going on between the officials and the table, but Trinity is definitely going to do their best to take advantage of the centenary foul situation. Whenever you get into the bonus, obviously, you know, you love that because not only are you getting the chance to score points, but that also means that your team, or, or that means that your opponent kind of needs to start worrying about who they need to start subbing in and out. But whenever it's this early, you really, really want to avoid, as, as, as that is gonna be the travel there by A.J. Hall, for Centenary, you really, really want to have avoided being in this situation, especially so early. Seven personal fouls during this first half. 8.58 to go before the halftime buzzer, and they are already starting to get into trouble with a couple of players, and that is only going to pick up later on in this game. A ball thrown to the Centenary bench, so Gents will get the ball there. Christian Green trying to find somebody, but just nobody was there. So Seth Thomas gets it into Greenleaf. Quick play for the Gents. That one doesn't fall. Contested rebound, but taken by Grayson Her. Trinity now working fast on their own. Her fumbles the ball. Ball still kind of loose. Zach Fenn really aggressive on his defense. Ball pops out, but it will be a foul. Charged to Fenn. And we'll see that many a times because Zach Fenn is an ultra aggressive defender. There's one of the reasons, and it's one of the reasons why he is so high on the steal list for the Tigers. He leads them in steals. And that's why he is ultra aggressive all the time. He creates chaos. Seth Thomas almost thought about a really deep three. Instead drives it in and the paint spinning around. He pierces the defense going through Green and Milhouse. Great finish by Seth Thomas. 
Zach Fenn has been super aggressive on defense all season long, as you mentioned, of course. Only two games this season without a steal. As that one rolls around the rim, puts his hands on his head a little bit. He can't believe that that one rolled out. But Zach Fenn has been fantastic on defense so far this year. Again, of course, only one game, or, or sorry, only two games without a steal set or, or set a season high with seven steals against Washington and Lee over, or, or over the uh, Leslie Robinson Holiday Classic. And it was just a fantastic day for him overall. Of course, also had six steals, uh, not, not last game, but the game before, whenever they went up to Colorado Springs to, or, or, or to play the Colorado College Tigers. And so Fenn, you know, despite not really being a big name, uh, whenever you look at this starting lineup, he has been huge for, for Coach Smith and, or, or, and the Trinity team. One of the key factors for the gents is the race to 70. Centenary has not won a game this year in which they have scored below 70 points. So that is certainly going to be a goal for Centenary. And for Trinity, a very tough defense to go and score 70 points against. But certain teams have done it. Schreiner put up 80, Clark put up 80, and Concordia put up over 80, so not impossible, but you have to be on your game on offense if you want that to happen. And of course, with both of these teams looking to get back into the SCAC tournament, this game is going to be very big in determining seeding. These are two teams that have played each other very, very closely over, over basically the entire time that they have played together. 25 games in total during the season history. Trinity leads that series 13 and 12, but one very interesting thing, Trinity really struggles whenever they have to go to Shreveport. A four and eight record uh, whenever they play the Gents on the road, but very interestingly, it's a complete mirror eight or, or eight and four record here at Calgard. Green going inbounded to Balo, and certainly Centenary wants that one even more at Calgard because they are very good in their dome over in Shreveport. Christian Green looking around, trying to drive it in. Drives it in, in the paint. And Christian Green just barely can't finish. Seth Thomas with the rebound. And some good passing, and he throws it down! A.J. Hall! What a slam! Gents in the lead, and with a ton of momentum, Zach Fenn working quick, though, and he scores! So 25-25. And things are moving way faster now as it seems like we went from zero to 100 real quick. Seth Thomas thought about a three. AJ Hall takes a three. And oh my goodness, he's not human right now. 28-25. AJ Hall coming in really big for the gents. Seth Thomas and AJ Hall doing a lot of work. Christian Green fumbles the ball. Seth Thomas with the takeaway. AJ Hall goes out, takes the three. Oh, and he hits another one. Can you even believe that right now? 25 to 31. And now three from Millhouse. That one doesn't go. Zach Fenn with the offensive board. Harvey with an open three. He can't get it there. Battle for the rebound. Seth Thomas and the Gents have all the momentum in the world right now but they slow down the play just a little bit. Quentin Beverly gets it, it over, and now Seth Thomas thinks about a three. Over to Hall, they let him take another three. He can't sink that one, but man, A.J. Hall has really put the Gents in a nice lead. Christian yeah. Green going in. That one doesn't fall. A.J. Hall with the rebound. The Gents keep going and going. Hall takes it himself, Euro step. That one doesn't fall. Zach Fenn with the board. A.J. Hall has scored the last eight points as that is a huge three. Jacob Harvey kind of breaking that little run that the Gents were on. Hall had scored the last eight straight points for the Gents so far. All, all eight of those points being, being the only points that he has had so far today, but just what a run that these two teams have gone on very high high-powered, high-scoring offenses. Trinity, of course, loving to kind of run up the score here. And um, um, and now that we sort of have a little bit of a break, 
You mentioned, of course, Centenary has or, or has not won a game in which they have scored under 70. Trinity has only scored under 80 twice so far this season, three times if you count last night with that 65-66 uh, loss. 31 and 28 and AJ Hall, four minutes on the court and he has a slam dunk and two huge threes to put the gents in a three point lead. You know, quite a thing to do in four minutes on the court, but I'm sure he will be getting some more time now because writing the hot hand in basketball, always a good idea. And Coach Smith certainly knowing the power that the dome brings to the gents because one of the unfortunate streaks is Coach Smith actually hasn't won a game over at Centenary in the time that he's been coaching. But every year brings new things and we'll see if the Tigers can spring a new win streak. And that's going to be a tough ending for the conference late for the Tigers at St. Thomas and at Centenary. And uh, Trinity student section making noise. First free throw goes in. So another one on the way, Jacoby Greenleaf not at all rattled. The junior from Houston, Texas, he just shrugs it off. Both of these teams are now in the bonus, so Trinity has been in the bonus for the last about five minutes or so. Centenary just got in there with that last foul as that second free throw shot is good. 33-28 the score, but at the moment, Fenn in this offense just gonna try and get some more points on the board. Throws it out to Balo and Balo driving. Now Williams draws the foul against Craig Collier and Zach Fenn threw like an 80 mile per hour fastball to Balo. <laughs> that was a fantastic pass by Fenn. He reminds me, he's like the men's team's version of Maggie Robbins with that ball control. He gets passes to everybody. No matter what position he's in, no matter how he's contorting his body, he gets it to them. And right now, it's getting the Tigers points as Ty Williams sinks the first free throw. The comparison to Maggie Robbins also really works whenever you factor in their defensive capabilities. Maggie Robbins, fantastic last season in the steal numbers with her defense, was one of the best on the team. I believe that she came close to setting a single season record for steals and assists last season. And so she was just fantastic. Zach Fenn doing something very similar here. Very active on offense, very active on defense. Very great hands. That's a shot from Balo, does not fall. But, but the comparisons between those two on both the men's and women's teams are kind of a little bit surprising, I'd say. Dula Roberts put in after the offensive rebound that he got. So 31-33, the three is up, and it's good. Very contested three for Quentin Beverly. Great shot from him, a 31-36. Dean Balo, spin move, gets it out to Abdullah Roberts. Roberts trying to take it in, backs out. Hands it over to Fenn, Fenn to Roberts. Roberts in the paint, tries to finish it off, and he does, it rolls over the rim. Tigers still down by a three, however. Gents, they have the winning hand right now. They get it over to Collier. Collier tries to get to Hall, slips through his hands. It'll be Tiger Ball. It was Zach Fenn who tipped it. The pass was intended for Hall. Fenn, or, or Fenn was able to tip it up. He kind of managed to get it to bounce off of the fingertips there of Hall instead of the palm. and. And yet again, Fenn showing why he is so good on this defense. He actually just got credited for the steal there on the stats page. So Fenn continuing his impressive defensive season as Milhouse down low pass outside to Fenn, who drives down another zinging pass. Balo from three and he nails it. Dean Balo has been fantastic from outside so far this season, and he continues that reputation here again today. Gents need to respond now because the momentum on the Tiger side were knotted up at 36. Deep three. 
does not go. A bit too short for Craig Collier. A bit optimistic of a three there. Millhouse trying to drive it in, and a charge whistled. So another whistle blown as maybe some extracurricular contact between Fenn and Collier. But we're going to have a stoppage in play right now as I believe we're in our under five minute media timeout. Maybe a bit hard to believe because the play has been just so back and forth. The pace of play here has been incredibly fast so far. Three minutes and 20 six seconds on the clock until we get that halftime buzzer, but what a fast-paced game this has been. 36-36. Can't really ask for much more than this in some Saturday afternoon action here in the SCAC. It has been a fantastic day so far. Capping off, of course, last night, the big win for, or, or, or the big win for the women. A very rough loss for the men, but considering that, that it was a one-point loss to a team receiving national poll votes, and of course that team being second in the conference, the loss definitely could have been worse than it was. And not to mention, missing Tanner Brown in that game. Of course, yeah. Missing number 11, that is a huge factor because of course, Balo is is great from deep, but he isn't Tanner Brown. Tanner Brown was electric over over the holiday break. He was a massive influence for this team. And whenever you lose somebody of of his caliber, it or, or it is going to affect the team both on offense and on defense. And it really showed last night. And I'd argue that it's also showing up a little bit here tonight because I doubt that that if Brown was was in this game, we would still be tied at 36 all. That one will remain gent ball. They say a Tiger touched it. Likely Ty Williams, and Williams looks like he is going to limp off the court, holding that right leg. I'm not sure if he pulled a hamstring, but not moving too well, and wincing in pain. Likely, we'll see if that's the end of the day for him. Never want to see that. Inbound is all the way on the other side of the court for the gents to keep Singleton moving quick. And travel called a little too fast for his own feet. 36 to 36. And Braxton Berry, tall man, back out on the court for the Tigers. Balo with the ball in his hands. And that is a Sad loss for the Tigers as Ty Williams at one point in this game was leading the Tigers in every category on the stat sheet. Barry down to Balo. Balo within the arc, trying to drive it in, working against Singleton. Now surrounded by Gents. And now getting it to Zach Fenn. Fenn can't finish it off. Board will go to Seth Thomas. Thomas moving fast. Look how athletic he is. And can't finish it off. Barry with the board. Dean Balo. Now it's Zach Fenn. Fenn showing off his speed, and he can finish. So 38 to 36, Tigers take the lead with about 2.30 left, and the Gents slowing it down. Zach Fenn did a fantastic job there of slipping around the defense. I believe it was Quentin Beverly, the one who he managed to get around there, kind of confusing the defense a little bit as that one is off the hands of Balo, but just kind of looking down at that sideline, uh, for for the Training Tigers, a little bit uh, of attention and concern being given to Ty Williams, of course, and it's kind of a little bit surprising because you associate the cold weather that we're getting this weekend uh, with lower body injuries in, in sports like football, baseball, soccer, sports that are played outdoors, but I suppose it also could have an impact here as the play clock is down under four, three, two, one, and they do not get the shot off little bit of miscommunication there by the centenary gents as they just flat ran out of time. But again, kind of surprising to see Williams go down with a kind of what we assume to be a muscle-related injury judging by, judging by the area of, of where he was kind of focusing on. Hoping for the best, of course, and that it's just a cramp, but 
with or, 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 but of course with this weather, you, you never really know anything or anything can happen both outside and inside apparently. Now hand it off to Abdullah Roberts. Roberts trying to back in. Roberts over to Barry. Barry takes it himself. That one rims out. But Roberts with the putback points. Tigers up by two possessions after Abdullah Roberts put that one in. And now are you over to set Thomas? Thomas loses the ball. And it's going to be a Tiger ball. I think it's the first time this season I've seen the ball go off the railing of the second floor. But when you have some of the most athletic teams in the conference on the court right now, things tend to be in weird places. Barry will be the ones to inbound it to Balo. Minute 22 left. Centenary playing a bit more aggressively on defense. Certainly don't want to go into the half down. They remember last night, 17 point lead. There's about seven minutes left in the first half. And they lost that game after Schreiner put up 45 in the second half. Right now, Trinity close to doing that in the first. Barry looking around. He gets it to Balo. Balo up to Roberts. And now Roberts dealing with some pressure from the Gents and gets it out to Milhouse. But they're going to call a foul. So Gents will cut off that momentum as that whistle just really killing the momentum for the Tigers. Coach Smith is not happy about that one. But Gents fans clearly are. So if you can hear that fan in the background, Coach Smith not happy. Tigers generally not happy about that one. But if you're the Gents, you'll take it because now you have an opportunity to cut the lead down to one or two. Some talk between the officials and the coach for Centenary, head coach Chris Dorsey. And Dorsey and the official doing a lot of pointing. Coach Smith will take this time to talk with his team, draw up a play. Both sides taking a duly needed break as I believe we're going to have a review. I'm sure soon I will hear what this specific review will be about from the control room, but until then, we will keep you entertained on the Tiger Network because this has been a really good game, hasn't it, Caleb? It has been a fantastic game so far as whatever they were reviewing, they clearly aren't reviewing anymore, but again, a fantastic back and forth affair between these two schools, and it's just been absolutely incredible to, to watch these teams play as Fenn almost with the big steal there remains in the hands of the gents but uh, you mentioned of course the crowd noise coming from from the centenary supporters Shreveport not exactly right next door as Balo puts this one up does not fall Roberts was in the or was in the area for the rebound but unable to haul it in shot is up and that one is good Quinton Beverly hits another three but it is very nice to see Centenary able to bring a little bit of, of hometown support despite the long drive and of course the very, very risky forecast that we have been projected over the next couple of days here. Everybody make sure to be safe uh, over, or, or over the next uh, two days of this Martin Luther King uh, three day weekend. Roberts will take the three. Shot clock goes off. It's going to be Gents ball, so they will get the last shot. 4.7 seconds left, plenty of time to get it down the court and put up a final shot. We'll see how set the shooter will be, but they're gonna leave it to AJ Hall, giving it to Collier. Collier driving it down the court. He loses the ball. Christian Green puts it up. That one won't go. I'm not sure he even got it off in time anyways, but 40 to 39, another thriller in Calgard. Tigers and Gents trading blows as we head into the second half with another close game, but the Tigers are used to playing in close games this year. This has definitely been a team that kind of really, really loves their halftime adjustments. They kind of do start out a little bit slow sometimes. It has sort of been the weakness of these two squads, uh, I think, just been able to watching them here at home. But, but there's just something about the halftime adjustments that or, or, or that this Tiger team 
and Coach Jimmy Smith are able to make. They are they are so good whenever they come out of the locker room, particularly during the first 10 minutes or so of the second half compared to the second 10 minutes. They kind of, they kind of really break away during that first, I guess you can call it a quarter, even though we don't have quarters in men's basketball, but the first sort of half of the half, they do really, really good at breaking away. And then uh, towards the second so-called half, uh, they do kind of allow the other team in. But, but Trinity hoping that those halftime adjustments that they are oh so familiar with will be able to be the difference and kind of allow them to extend uh, this very slim lead that they have right now. Stay tuned on the Tiger Network. We have about 13 minutes and 45 seconds until the second half. And everyone stay tuned because remember, the Gents really need 70 to be in the chance for winning because they haven't won a game where they've scored less than 70, but they're already halfway there. So stay tuned on the Tiger Network. We will be back after the halftime break.
This game getting back underway here. Jacob Milhouse with the ball here on the Tiger Network. Trinity leading a 40 to 39 over the Centenary College Gents. As we get this second half underway, it was a very high paced first half. That is a three ball shot by Fenn, no good. Rebound taken in there by Seth Thomas. And Reed, this is an incredibly fast first half. What are you expecting uh, for us to be able to see here out of this second? I expect Centenary to put up a lot of shots because I think maybe they even know that this is not a game you're going to win on the defensive front, especially after a first half like that where it is 40 to 39. Complete opposite for the Tigers. They're going to want to slow this one down because they know they can limit good shooting teams. Jacob Harvey with a big three, 43 to 39. And they want to keep the pace up and limit those good shots because I think they know that they have better depth than Centenary and they want to show that depth off. Centenary is going to be playing the, the catch-up game quite a bit if this is the trend of the game. Seth Thomas has something to say about that, however. The conference's second leading scorer putting that one in for two. Jacob Milhouse passes out to Barry. Now Harvey with another three, and he sinks it. Back-to-back -back threes for Jacob Harvey. 46 to 41, and the Gents working fast, but slowing it down. Seth Thomas passes the ball back, but a touch off a Tiger, so no over and back this time. Seth Thomas getting it over to Collier. Into Quentin Beverly, off his hands, Tiger ball. Pass was just a little bit out of reach there for Beverly, but what an incredibly fast start here for the Trinity Tigers offense. Of course, Jacob Harvey has been fantastic so far this season from deep. Ended up getting D3 Hoops Player of the Week earlier on this season for, for some of his work that we saw whenever this team went to Las Vegas to play uh, in, in the D3 Hoops Holiday Classic out there. And it was just a fantastic sort of holiday experience overall for Trinity. Of course, went undefeated up until last night. Is that shot no good? Rebound by Fenn, who puts it back up and in himself. Zach Fenn doing a good job getting his name on the stat sheet here. That's going to be his sixth point of the game. But this Tiger team, besides a little hiccup last night, has been absolutely rolling so far in the 2023-24 season. That one airballed by Jalen Bear and now stripped away by Seth Thomas. This is a very, very high, high paced uh, sort of pace of play as we start this second half. Now Milhouse gets the rebound there, trying to pass it down to Harvey. Harvey with a three, and he gets the three and an and one. Jacob Harvey on fire right now. What an incredible play by Jacob Harvey. You could hear the entire gym erupt in a cheer. As soon as that one left his hands, it looked perfect. You're gonna get a replay of it there. Foul on the shot by Thomas. But that ball just went straight down and straight in. But now we've actually got a technical foul, it looks like as Thomas is going to go to the line, would be very interesting to see what's happening here. It was Christian Green who was charged with the technical. They were saying that motion, the nod to the bench. That was not okay, according to the officials. So technical given to Christian Green. And now Seth Thomas with the, these technical free throws. So 17-15 left to play. And that's also, or, uh, and that's also going to, to to negate the and one attempt by by Harvey as well. So first of the two free throws does not fall, and kind of a little bit of an excitement killer there for Trinity. But but you can hear this crowd starting to get loud. Of course, this being the first weekend with students back on campus, as Thomas cannot nail either of his free throws and and gets a pretty good celebration there out of the Trinity crowd. And actually, I was wrong. It looks like Harvey will be going to the line here. So Centenary just had to shoot there too. And now Harvey gonna go to the line for Zan one. 
Harvey, historically a very good free throw shooter, although the Tigers this year have been down on their free throw shooting percentage. But Harvey says he doesn't care about that. He sinks it. Said after the Vegas game, I had 14 free throws. I didn't make all of them. I didn't like that. He wants to make every single free throw because they're free. Zach Fenn with the takeaway. Another steal for the Chaos Arbiter. Zach Fenn getting it over to Barry. Barry out to Green again. Play resets just a little bit. Green goes in, rolls shot from the elbow, draws the foul. Had to be some contact there as that ball was nowhere near the rim. So some free throws for Christian Green, who historically, unfortunately for him, has not been the most effective free throw shooter. Makes about 50% of his free throws. So hopefully he has a better day at the office right now. Tigers up by 11 though, and they're starting to really want to pull away from the Gents. First free throw is made. And remember, Shriner put up 45 against the Gents in the second half alone. So Tigers on pace really to try and do the same. Christian Green's definitely kind of the only weakness that we've been able to see out of him so far this year has been his free throw shooting. And his shooting last night, of course, was affected by, by the sort of fall that he took to his right wrist, of course, with him being a righty. It does kind of limit your or, or, or your your ability to shoot. And he's obviously hoping that it will improve over the course of the year as Trinity with the big takeaway Three on two situation and Green just wisely backs out of it and lets the offense start to set up. But considering how how impressive Christian Green has been so far this year, to have only one weakness is definitely a lot better than some of the other players that we see both on the Trinity team and also on, on the teams uh, that we go against. Jacoby Greenleaf with a massive block there. Denies the Tigers some points, but they will get the benefit of being able to throw it in here. 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Plenty of time to get an open shot if they work effectively. And Barry backs it out. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. We'll see who they go to. Braxton Barry takes it himself. And travel on Braxton Barry. So, say of relief for the gents as really down by double digits. They want to cut that lead down. Number 25 for the gents, Christian Wilkerson. New face on the court for the Gents. One of the very few freshmen out of Colleen, Texas. Now, Kobe Greenleaf. Greenleaf working his way around. Zach Fenn trying to get a steal, but instead Greenleaf takes it in himself, puts points on the board for Centenary. 11 point lead for the Tigers. Braxton Berry gets it to Harvey. Harvey backs up. Working against Beverly. Bumps into Millhouse, but he gets the ball, so over to Barry, now Christian Green. 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Green takes initiative. It ends up in the hands of Zach Fenn. Fenn over to Barry. Barry spinning around, gets it to Fenn. Fenn can't finish the job, however. Just not, not a good enough shot. And now open three for AJ Hall, and he sinks it. AJ Hall, they're going to need him to heat up again. 54, 46, Trinity. Still leading by a good margin, but they want it to be better. And Christian Green will draw the foul. Jacoby Greenleaf wanting a charge, but he will not be getting one. Hall was so hot at the end of that first half. And you're right, Trinity really wants to make sure that they do not let him heat up again. He absolutely killed them from outside. Had a run of eight straight points, had a dunk. Slammed home two threes as well in a very, very impressive streak that really kind of lit a fire underneath this centenary team. And right now, I believe that that is going to, or, or I believe that, that that is going to be a very big focus for Coach Smith and the Trinity defense, just making sure to limit Hall's ability to kind of kick off as we uh, as we have about 15 minutes left to go in this second half already a little bit under five minutes gone it's been a very very fast second half and a couple of tigers have to look out for themselves braxton barry and jacob harvey both have three personal fouls so can't foul much more and losing harvey would be pretty devastating for the tigers 16 points he's sunk five threes and that's all he's sunk 
five for nine, five for seven from deep. So every shot that he's made has been from the perimeter. It's something that these Tigers really like to do. At the beginning of the year, it wasn't quite so. The three-point percentage was a bit down, but as of late, they've really found their stride from the arc, and they've been putting it in very well. Harvey gets it into Barry, and now over to Balo, who has been one of the best Tigers in that regard. Whistle blown. Not. They're going to give it. Looks Tiger like ball. it is going to be Trinity Ball. Trying to see. There was an official who went over to the scoring table, but not entirely sure what they were talking about. As Green with it down near the free throw line, gets it into Barry. Barry fighting through a ton of traffic. It was a one on four situation there as the Gents just swarmed Braxton Barry. And now Trinity trying to do the same. Backs it outside. Shot is up from outside. Cannot get it to fall there. Christian Wilkerson, the one with that shot. So you mentioned it at the start of this half. Centenary really start putting up shots as that is a, another great play down low for the Trinity Tigers. Shot is up from outside. No good. Rebound Christian Green. Dean Balo in the area as well. It was Jacob Harvey, the one who got that last play up. But it, or, or, but this has been an incredibly efficient Trinity offense here in this second half so far. Now the Gents trying to cut the deficit back to single digits. Collier off the back of the rim. Collier has the ball back in his hands, however, after the rebound by Greenleaf. Collier takes it himself. That one goes in. So just need a second attempt at it. 56-48, Tigers in the lead. And now really starting to see play slow down. No pressure from the Gents. Tigers walk it back to the other side of the court. Harvey with the ball in his hands now. We'll see if he finds Balo. He does find Balo. Balo thought about a three and said takes it in. Gets it over to Abdullah Roberts who puts it in for the easy lay. So Gents having a hard time keeping that lead of the Tigers consistently below double digits. But AJ Hall yet again has the easy bucket. 58 to 50, both teams breaking the half century mark. Balo handing it over to Barry. Barry back over to Balo. Balo thought about a really deep three. Instead, over to Christian Green who gets the dunk. Again, he can't keep getting away with it. Christian Green, the man is a walking highlight reel. And the Tigers up by double digits. And the momentum certainly coming back to their side. Look at that right there. The alley-oop dunk, it is something that these Tigers have practiced and really perfected over the course of the season. He had one of those last night as well. Christian Green has been so electric. We saw it, of course, in, in the first Tiger Network broadcast of the season against Mary Harden Baylor, and he has just continued doing it ever since, just dominating opponent defenses, and it's one of the big reasons why this freshman is so incredibly special. He is such an, or, or such an amazing talent. And in talking with Coach Smith earlier on this season, uh, I believe it was in preparation for the, uh, for the Holiday Classic, I asked uh, Coach Smith about Christian Green, about uh, one of the other big freshmen, Dean Balo, and, and he mentioned that during the recruiting process, during, during the entire preparation, essentially, for the season, they knew that Green was going to be good. They knew that Balo was going to be good eventually. They didn't know, or, or the coaching staff didn't know that both of them would be this good this early, and they have been huge for this team so far in the 23-24 season. Now A.J. Hall will be the one, I'm sorry, Christian Wilkerson will be the one to inbound it. And now Wilkerson with the ball in his hands, ambush of Tigers swarming him, and Craig Collier. Here's the defense just a little bit, and now Quentin Beverly gets it in to Greenleaf. Greenleaf in the paint, puts it up, and he responds for the Gents. 60 to 52. The Gents trying to work their way in, and cut this lead down. We'll see, but over time, the Tigers 
driving in is Christian Green, and he puts it up and in. So 10-point lead continues to be the trend here in this second half for Trinity, as it's been a very tough time for Centenary to cut down this lead when Christian Green just goes in and gets a bucket like that. You have to play better defense. Beverly back down to Collier. Peter Collier at the top of the key in the paint. Puts it up from just in front of the free throw line. Can't get it to go, however. So Tigers, another opportunity. Christian Green going down to Braxton Berry. Jacob Harvey keeping the ball in his hand. Tigers will see if they chew away some shot clock. Abdullah Roberts trying to work his way up. Instead takes it in, gets it to Green. Green thought about getting it to Harvey. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Abdullah Roberts, what a great pass from Christian Green. I don't know how many people realize how tight that window was, but it was incredibly tight and the inbounds was just thrown away. So Tigers get another shot to score. You mentioned earlier on uh, during this half with Trinity kind of going away from the three ball at the start uh, of this season, but it really did kick off over the holiday break. And one of the big reasons for that was of course, the incredible junior player, Jacob Harvey. Over, uh, over the two games that they played in Vegas at the D3 Hoops Classic, Jacob Harvey, 54 total points over those two games, as well as setting a new Trinity program record with nine three-pointers made in a single game. He was absolutely electric, and this entire team, basically ever since Thanksgiving, has just been shooting from deep. They have been loving the deep ball, and they have been nailing shots. We're gonna get a little bit of a scoring update here from Kerrville, Shriner University, playing against St. Thomas. It is a very, very tight game being played over there in some more SCAC action. 11-18 to go in the second half. St. Thomas just made a free throw to make it a 51-53 lead for the Celts, and a loss for St. Thomas would be absolutely huge for, for, of course, the standings. Shriner, number three, St. Thomas, number two, Trinity, number one. So all of the games that are being played right now have massive implications for the conference as Green barely unable to get that one in. Rejected by the front of the rim. Green almost got his second highlight reel of the play, or, or sorry, of the day, but so far, all the games being played right now across the state of Texas in this conference have massive implications for what we will be seeing over the next two to three weeks. And now, 11.34 left, 64 to 52. And the SCAC, everybody knows it. Nothing taken for granted in the SCAC. Seth Thomas will take a free throw. It's up, and he gets it. So double digits for Seth Thomas on the day. The man's nearly a walking double-double. He is averaging 18.4 points a game and 8.6 rebounds a game. So certainly the player to watch out for on the centenary side. But as we've seen with AJ Hall, you cannot discount anybody because the supporting cast behind them, all very capable in their own rights. 10 point lead for the Tigers once again. Abdullah Roberts works his way. Pulls, pulls back out. Now back in again. Abdullah Roberts trying to do it himself. Puts it up and he puts it in. Tigers up by 12, 66 to 54. Roberts, the forward, loves being down there in the paint. Loves just being physical with the ball. As that one gets thrown up and it does not fall, but will be going to the line for two. Looks like that's going to be Seth Thomas, I believe. It's either going to be Seth, or no, sorry, that's 24, not two. So that will be A.J. Hall, senior out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. Hall, of course, we called his name quite a few times. These will be his first free throws that he will be shooting of the day. But, of course, he had a couple of threes earlier on and has been a pretty big impact player for Centenary. As you look at the free throw right now, uh, Coach Dorsey just just talking to the team, trying to use this free throw as kind of a little bit of a mini timeout as Hall goes to the line for his two. AJ Hall trying to cut the lead to just 10 for the Tigers. 
That one goes, 66 to 56. Grayson Her on the court for Trinity. Get over to Roberts. Abdullah Roberts jukes out his man, and he does it again. Abdullah Roberts has gotten the last couple of points, 68 to 56. Gents working quick. Hakeem Singleton gets over to Seth Thomas. I mean, to deal with Christian Green being aggressive with his defense, and he's going to be called for the personal foul. That'll be pretty big for the Tigers. Christian Green pleading his case, but the appeal's not going to work, so Seth Thomas will be the one to inbound it here. He gets it in to Gerald Old Mirage. Mirage getting it over to A.J. Hall. Singleton looking for a man inside. Hall runs in, but no pass to him, but he'll get it on the outside. Thought about a three, didn't take it. Singleton takes a three, however, and that one, I think Green had some contact there. Shot clock goes off. Great defensive stop by the Tigers. Good defense by Green to tip that one from Singleton, really making that play possible. And now Balo with the ball in his hands. Gives it up to Christian Green. We'll see if he drives it in. Hands it off to Balo. And now Abdullah Roberts receiving the pass from Grayson Herr. Roberts takes it himself, and he's just a scoring machine right now. 70 to 56. Tigers have broken 70. And whistle comes. It looks and like it's going to be for a timeout here. And Abdullah Roberts having one heck of a game for himself so far this season. It's been kind of a little bit quiet of a season for him so far, only averaging about 10 minutes per game. Also, also only averaging, you know, about three points per game. So right now, 16 points on the day. He has been absolutely fantastic. It's actually a season high for him so far today with those 16 points. His previous best was against Chicago. That one, uh, a game that we got to cover here on the Trinity Tiger Network uh, over the uh, over the Leslie Robinson Holiday Classic where, where he had eight. So today he has doubled that point total for, for his season high and a fantastic day for the senior out of Houston, Texas. AJ Hall, ball in his hands. Turns it down to Mirage. Now Hall drives it in from within the arc and he scores. AJ Hall, his name appears yet again. And Balo working it slow now. Abdullah Roberts heading over to the corner. Balo trying to drive it in. Works up against Seth Thomas. Gets the ball out to her. Grayson Her with the three. That one doesn't go. Christian Green with the board, so Herb will try it again. And he sinks it that time. 73 to 58. Trinity just needing that second chance was Grayson Her, And he made it count. Seth Thomas trying to respond. Kicks it out. Does not take the three. And now the ball is loose. Tigers have it. Jacob Harvey giving it up to Abdullah Roberts. Roberts back out to Balo. Balo to Roberts. Roberts working up against Greenleaf, and now over to Jacob Harvey. Harvey wanting to choose some time off the clock, waiting for a play to develop, perhaps. Looking over towards Christian Green, but he drives it to the other side, works his way into the arc, tries to do it himself, and then a little bit tangled on the rim. And now foul will be called, and Abdullah Roberts, not only a season high, but a career high for the senior today. 16 points, breaks his previous record of 14 points that he achieved last year. So a very nice day for the senior. And onto the court for Abdullah Roberts is Grant Jacobs. And a standing ovation for Roberts as he goes back to the bench. Abdullah Roberts been absolutely fantastic so far today. And you know, it is kind of a shame that we haven't been able to call his name out a lot so far, not just this season, but over the last couple seasons. Of course, Braxton Berry has done a really good job playing down low, and so Roberts has been playing a lot more of a bench role, but of course, Coach Smith talking about all the players on this team, they all understand their roles. There aren't really any big egos on this team, and whenever anybody gets a shot to, to perform, they really step up and they really take advantage of the opportunities that they are given as this shot outside does not fall a bit too far off the rim. 
Rebounded by Centenary, though. It's Akeem Singleton, the one who pulled it in. And this is just a Trinity team that is meshing so well together. As this shot from the corner falls, A.J. Hall getting another one, getting his name shouted out yet again. 15 points for A.J. Hall during this one. Three shots made from three. Three of four on the day from outside, as well as two more down low and adding a couple of free throws. Christian Green from outside does not get it to fall. And Centenary takes back over here, trying to get their offense set up. Giants find themselves down by 12. Mirage working his way outside, now works his way in at the top of the key. He's back out for Hall. A.J. Hall works in the paint. And that one will be a foul drawn by A.J. Hall, who is continuing his great day so far. Gents, a win here would be incredibly huge, undoubtedly huge. So, time out on the court. We will take a small break and come back to those free throws. But really, some two maybe unexpected players coming in big for both sides. Absolutely. I mean, of course, you always expect your starters to be the ones who make the biggest impact during the game. And that isn't to say that these centenary starters haven't really had much of an impact as well. But A.J. Hall has been such an incredible player. And of course, uh, Abdullah Roberts as well. 16 points, as you mentioned, career high for him. He's actually coming very, very close to uh, Jacob Harvey, who, or, or who currently leads the team in terms of points. Harvey with 18. And Harvey has definitely been kind of limited a little bit during this first half. But... It has been one heck of a game for, for a bunch of players who maybe don't get as much recognition as, uh, as maybe they deserve after their performances so far during this game and also over the course of this season. Certainly love to see some of the more maybe overshadowed players getting their names called out so frequently. Now on the court, Go both sides, and both sides know just how big this game is. Centenary, a team that lost plenty of seniors last year. A team that was fighting with the Tigers for one of those buys in the SCAC tournament. Ultimately, at the end of the season, Trinity would be the ones to come out on top in that race. But now, Tigers, this is a different team. A much better start for them. AJ Hall sinks the first free throw, 73 to 62. Of course, both sides really wanting to get the win here, but Tigers more so because if you let Centenary win here, then it's going to be a tougher time in Shreveport as Centenary has proven over and over again. That free throw doesn't go, so an 11 point lead for the Tigers. And now Grayson Herr with the ball. Grant Jacobs receives it at the top of the arc, dodges a couple of gents, hands it over to Dean Balo. Balo into Christian Green, and Green will draw the foul. Once again, Tigers forcing issues and sending Green to the line. You mentioned, of course, the struggles that Trinity has had whenever they go on the road to Shreveport. Coach Smith, of course, never winning a game whenever he goes to play at Centenary. That one, of course, uh, carrying over not just to his time here with Trinity, uh, he or, or he has been here now since, since the 2020 COVID season, but also, uh, back to his time with other teams, of course, he came over here from Millsaps, did not win against Centenary before, and it's just been a struggle. Don't know if it's uh, some unlucky mojo or just the Centenary teams being really, really good at home, but a win here would be huge and hopefully avoid a potential sweep if, if the so-called curse continues to live into this season. Raj works it in. Dishes it to, to Keem Singleton, who draws the foul. Fancy passing from the Gents coming up big once again for them. 75 to 62. 632 left to play, still plenty of time. A lead like this certainly isn't insurmountable. First shot from Singleton, doesn't go. So certainly not helping themselves out right now from the line. 
Grant Jacobs is going to be the one who will be picking up that foul. Junior out of New Braunfels, Texas. Don't get to call his name too much. He's definitely been a lot more of a sort of rotational player so far this season. But it definitely hasn't been a bad season for him by any means as well has been an impact player. Whenever he is on the court as Fenn driving down, he's gonna go up and he will go to the line for two. And just looking at the career free throw numbers, or, or sorry, the season free throw numbers for Fenn, doing pretty good, a bit under two thirds shooting percentage so far this year from the charity stripe. So we'll definitely be hoping to improve that number a little bit here as he will go to the line for two. First shot from Fenn is good. So Tigers extend their lead a little bit more. And now some new returning faces for the Tigers. Harvey, Barry, Milhouse coming in for Grant Jacobs, Dean Balo, and Grayson Herr. So a couple starters back out on the court as the original starting five completely all back together, gangs back together on the court, 77 to 63. And now Gents working quick, Seth Thomas, they're gonna be the one that they really want to heat up so far. And the ball is lost, so Tigers get another takeaway. And Christian Green over, it's Zach Fenn puts up a three, that one doesn't fall. And now the Gents, another opportunity as Ruben Cazares a new face on the court for the Gents, number 23. Quentin Beverly trying to work his way in. That kicks it out to A.J. Hall. A.J. Hall has been great tonight, but he defers it back to Beverly, who works his way in. Tried to get a pass to his teammate, but it was a bit errant. But Seth Thomas dodges a couple of men and hands it over. It's a 3-2-1 count. That one won't fall. Just too rushed of a shot for Seth Thomas to make. And the Tigers' defense stands strong. They're up 77 to 63. And right now, holding the Gents under that oh so coveted 70 mark. Christian Green gets it in to Zach Fenn. Zach Fenn with the lay in. 79 63. Gents will have to work even faster. Mentioning, of course, uh, all the players that have been rotating in and out, as that is a fantastic play down low by A.J. Hall. But with all the players that have been kind of rotating in and out, it, or, or it is very easy to kind of forget the players that haven't been rotating in and out. One of those players that, that we saw leave the game towards the end of the first half, Ty Williams, was holding his leg in or, or in clearly a lot of pain. Looked to be a hamstring or a thigh issue somewhere in that general area. He did come out of the locker room to, to start the second half. Has not played yet so far in this second half and has been on the bench the entire time holding a, uh, holding a massage gun to that thigh. So hoping that it will not be too serious of an injury moving forward. Uh, obviously, you know, pretty questionable to be returning for this game uh, if we're putting, you know, labels on it. But uh, definitely uh, hopeful considering the fact that he did not stay in the locker room uh, after halftime. He did not go to the locker room uh, at the uh, at the end of that first half. And, er, and of course, he's still on the bench cheering on his teammates there from his spot. Some free throws for Seth Thomas, who the Tigers have very effectively held in check today. That's his 12th point right there after he makes that one. Abdullah Roberts back on the court. He tags in for Zach Fenn. Fenn has had a great night defensively, but Coach Smith wanted to put the senior out there because for these Tigers, not too many home games left in the regular season. Could get some postseason action, but of course with the wackiness of the skack. You never know what will happen. Christian Green looking around, working against Thomas. Some two versus two violence ends up in the favor of the Gents as Christian Green's pass just sails out of bounds. And now Centenary with the ball in their hands yet again. Really need to score here. Almost can't really afford to not score on pretty much every possession. 
with the way that the Tigers are running right now. Mirage is down to Thomas. Seth Thomas back up to Mirage. Now over to Quentin Beverly. Beverly over to Hall. And Wilkerson and Hall gets the three right there. So 79-70. And now Jacob Harvey looking around. Christian Green has the ball in his hands. Wanting to kill as much clock as possible. Give the gents less time. Works his way in. Puts it up. And a great shot by Christian Green. Tough shot to be certain, but no match for Christian Green have been the gents so far today. Something to mention as well as we have a bit over three minutes to go here in this second half. Three Trinity players at the moment in some very serious foul trouble. Four personal fouls for Braxton Berry. Three personal fouls for the man with the ball right now, Jacob Harvey, as well as three personal fouls and a technical foul for Christian Green. Of course, Green getting slapped with that tech for the uh, for the celebration after the Jacob Harvey and one three-point shot that sent this gym into an absolute frenzy. Meanwhile, in terms of players kind of in a little bit of trouble for Centenary, two players on their team with three personal fouls, that one being Seth Thomas, as well uh, as Jacoby Greenleaf. And in terms of Trinity players on the bench right now, nobody really being threatened in terms of foul trouble. Everybody who is at risk of getting pretty close to fouling out uh, is ironically enough on the court at the moment, but with three minutes left to go, not really too much of a worry. If you lose them here, you aren't gonna lose them for a large amount of time. So Coach Smith definitely using his star players to their full potential. Uh, we are also getting a scoring update from Kerrville, or Kerrville as well. Schreiner has retaken the lead uh, as they host the St. Thomas Celts. Of course, St. Thomas beat Trinity last night, 66-65, the final in that one that went down to the wire. Uh, Schreiner leading 73-67 with a bit under four minutes left to go. So very, very big implications in the conference standings and the race to see who can win the, the sort of regular season championship, if you will, uh, for, for the conference and the race to see who will be able to earn that automatic buy whenever whenever we all go or, or whenever we all go down to Shreveport uh, in late November, February 23rd, whenever the SCAC tournament will be held. First shot from Harvey is good. He's very consistent at the line. Puts the Tigers up by 10 yet again. Tigers have held a lead for nearly this entire second half, for most of the game, really. And the Gents just playing catch up and catch up, but Tigers have flashed their depth in this second half. And whistle blown. And the officials are gonna come together. We'll see what they're talking about. Believe that there was an issue with the clock. The shot clock did not start. It's still at, er, it's still at 29 seconds as we're getting a replay here. I heard something about the shot not counting and it is suddenly strangely quiet here in Calgary. Not really used to it being this quiet with this many people in the building as they are looking at something on the monitor, I think trying to figure out uh, the timing of everything. The officials aren't huddled around the monitor, but I do see movement on the monitor screen. So I believe that we're getting some work done in the control room. Uh, while we're here, we'd just like to segue this into a shout out to everybody down in the control room for making all this possible on Tiger Network. We would not be able to do this without y'all. And of course, for, for, or for everybody watching, we wouldn't be doing this if, if, of course, there was nobody to be broadcasting for. So we're very thankful to have you guys on the broadcast here on this Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, a bit before 5.45 in the afternoon here in San Antonio. And with just a few minutes left to go, Centenary really going to want to try and pick up the pace if they want any chance of 
taking down Trinity on the road. Shot is up from the corner and that one falls. That's a good start. AJ Hall continuing his fantastic day from essentially everywhere. 24 points for number 24 on the day. Leads all players during this game. And he has been one of the big reasons why Centenary is still in it. Balo puts it up, does not fall. And that is going to be a travel against Seth Thomas as he went down. Trinity student section starting to get loud here, starting to maybe chirp and jeer a little bit at these players, try and throw them off their game. Trinity student section, especially during the spring semester, a completely different atmosphere. As Harvey from outside cannot get it to go. Rebound by A.J. Hall. Whenever we were talking with the Shriner coaching staff earlier on this year, they mentioned the SEAC tournament last season. As that is a great play there. Timeout going to be called here by Centenary. But Shriner coaching staff mentioned SEAC tournament last season stands full of Trinity students, Trinity supporters, people rooting these Tigers on. The best atmosphere they have ever been in in a basketball setting. And if we even get half of the numbers that we have right now uh, for the next four, five, six home games, however many we have left for both the men's and women's, then it is going to be really, really hard to take down the Tigers in Cal or Calgary. And a congratulations due for A.J. Hall. 24 points is a season high for A.J. Hall. I would look to see if it is a career high because A.J. Hall has played quite a bit of time. Centenary. Some websites, however, are more easily accessed than others. It is not a career high. He scored 34 against Southwestern. So if you can believe it, he's more capable than he is right here, right now. But Tigers coming out of the timeout, still up by six. Very quickly, just a two possession game. Trinity doesn't want to let up. Zach Fenn on the court. Balo gets it into Roberts. They're going to ride the hot hand of Abdullah Roberts as they send them back out there. Dean Balo hands it off to Jacob Harvey, another one of the leading scorers for Trinity. Now to Balo. Balo hands it off to Green. Green. Looking to drive in, tries to pierce the defense. He does, and he puts it in. So 85 to 77. We'll see how the gents respond because one minute 36 left. You don't have that much time. Now put up for three. That one won't fall. A bit too short for Seth Thomas. Maybe just a two bit far back for the leading scorer for Centenary. And now. Christian Green looking around, tries to get it to Zach Fenn, but just a bit too high. Maybe Christian Green could catch that pass, but Zach Fenn doesn't quite have the height that Christian Green has. The skill that we've seen out of AJ Hall coming off the bench really reminds me of something uh, that I heard, uh, not really here at Trinity, but, but during high school, uh, a coach said, just because you're on the bench doesn't mean that you aren't a good player. I don't want all five of my best players to be my starters because I don't want them all to be tired out at the same time. And I feel like that's a strategy that this centenary coaching staff, uh, Chris Dorsey, of course, um, Dominic um, Priscilla as well, uh, have kind of implemented with this team as well. AJ Hall has been fantastic for them so far during this game and during the season, he's also had an impact as well. So just because you see these players on the bench whenever they start the game does not necessarily mean that, that they are not one of the five best players on the floor uh, wearing the uniform. Jacob Harvey gets fouled. Tigers certainly want the ball in his hands at the free throw line as he threatens to bring the Tiger League back up to 10 and perhaps put the dagger in the hearts of the Gents as Trinity's Calgar Gym, their jungle, not very good with their manners because it's always a cold welcome. That one goes in, 87 to 77. Tigers very close to breaking 90. We'll, we'll see if they will or not, but as the timeout hits the floor, I'm sure Coach Dorsey wants to draw something up because certainly not out of it yet. We saw that yesterday for certain 
as Trinity looked to be out of it, but just a couple of quick steals and a couple of quick buckets can make this a game yet again. 10 point lead for Trinity though, it's going to be tough. The four possession game is definitely something that's very difficult to come back from with such little time remaining, 47.8 seconds left to go, as you can see on your screen. But again, as you mentioned, it is definitely possible. A quick three, get a turnover, another quick three, all of a sudden it's a four point game and or, or, and you could have shaved, you know, if you're lucky, five, six, maybe up to 10 seconds off the clock, depending on how quick you're able to get the ball back. And of course, how accurate your shooters are. If you are shooting it from outside, you definitely want to put it in the hands of AJ Hall. Five for six so far on the day from three. 26 points so far. Again, 47.8, basically 48 seconds left to go. So still some time to get some extra points. He leads all scorers on the day. And this game is definitely not over yet. It's going to be incredibly difficult to, to come back for the gents, but far from impossible. We have seen much, much higher scoring runs in much less time before. And anything's possible with how chaotic this conference and these two teams can be at times. And now AJ Hall to get it over to Thomas. Thomas, deep three. And that one won't go. Christian Green with the board. Trying to get it away, but intercepted by Quentin Beverly. And now Mirage getting over to Beverly. Quick three from Beverly. That one doesn't go, but offensive board by AJ Hall. AJ Hall surrounded by an ambush of Tigers. Slips through the hands, and they're going to say over and back. So Tigers will get the ball. So really big moment for Trinity as that may just about wrap it up here in Calgar Gym. Balo getting it over to Zach Fenn. We'll see how aggressive they foul the Tigers. No shot clock left. Fenn being very casual with his dribbling. The Gents hoist up the white flag. They know it's over. So the Tigers will come away with a huge win. 87 to 77, the final score here in Calgar Gym. The Tigers will send the gents packing back to Shreveport. A great conference win, and it's certainly important. We'll give you a scoring update over in Kerrville. It is 77 to 77 with about a minute 40 left over there. That will be a big result to look at as well, but Caleb, as for this game, it was everything that it was built up to be, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we were talking about it. I mean, obviously, the games this weekend were kind of overshadowed by the one last night. You know, going into this weekend, we were all talking about St. Thomas. But this centenary game was another game that, that a lot of people had circled on the calendar. Two absolutely fantastic teams near, near or close to the top of the conference. And it's just a, you know, a fantastic group of, of teams that we have in this conference. It's, uh, it's just absolutely incredible to be looking at the talent that is throughout this conference. And again, you know, it does kind of stink a little bit that, that, in, or that, that in the preparation for this weekend, it was the St. Thomas game that got a lot more attention than this game did. Because as you mentioned, this game 100% lived up to the billing of, you know, uh, another potential showdown, of course. Shriner, number three uh, in, or, or in the conference, we were just mentioning their scoring update. But Centenary also pretty close to the top of the conference as well. And so it's, it's just an absolutely fantastic group of teams that we have in this conference. Looking at the men's basketball uh, page here on, on the SCAC website, of course, Trinity now extends, Trinity now extends their, their win total in conference to a seven and one record. St. Thomas, of course, Shriner, we don't really know the outcome of that one. Centenary falls to four and four in conference. Gonna make it very, very difficult uh, for them whenever they uh, play to host 
uh, the SCAC tournament later on in February. But we are looking forward to an absolutely fantastic couple of games to end out this conference slate. Still three more games here at home for the Trinity Tigers two next weekend. And then there's gonna be a couple of weeks off, but still a great slate of events coming up that you will not wanna miss. I will take you through our statistical leaders for the game for both sides. For the victorious Trinity Tigers, Jacob Harvey led the team in points with 22. Christian Green led the team in both assists and rebounds, four and eight respectively there. Of course, for Centenary, the points leader is none other than AJ Hall. Meanwhile, Seth Thomas had a double-double, 12, uh, 12 rebounds along with 13 points. So a great day for Seth Thomas. Like I said, man's a walking double-double. And he also the team in assists with five. Upcoming for these teams, for the Gents, they will go back to Shreveport. They will play Austin College on Friday. That's a 5.30 tip. And U Dallas on, on Saturday. That is a 4 o'clock tip. Meanwhile, for the Tiger Men, be sure to join us for Stashy Friday on January 19th, 5.30 tip. Uh, I will certainly have my power rankings for who has the stashiest stash of the bunch. Meanwhile, on the following day, it will be Texas Lutheran coming to San Antonio. Seguin San Antonio showdown, always competitive. That's a four o'clock tip there. And of course, stay tuned because in about 22 minutes, we will have the women's side of this event going. Trinity University women's basketball against Centenary College ladies basketball. So stay tuned for everyone in the control room. Caleb Reed, I am Reed Rosales with the Tiger Network. Thank you for tuning in and keep staying tuned because it'll be a great one for Trinity and Centenary women.